Prince Eugen emerged from the depths of Germany's naval rearmament in the 1930s, boasting an awe-inspiring design and groundbreaking technology that set her apart. With the stage set for World War II, Prince Eugen became a central figure in various engagements, including the infamous Battle of Denmark Strait. In a clash of titans, she faced off against British adversaries, unleashing a storm of firepower that echoed through the tumultuous seas. But Prince Eugen's fate was far from sealed. Damaged and repaired, she ventured into the treacherous Baltic Sea, supporting German forces on the Eastern Front. Surviving the chaos of war, and later withstanding not one but two atomic blasts, Prince Eugen stood as a testament to human ingenuity and strength. As we delved into Prince Eugen's story, we learned that the ship war bekannt als der glückliche Prinz, which means that she was known as the Happy Prince for consistently emerging unscathed from combat. As a hardcore World War II history buff like us, you'll know that understanding military history requires more than just surface-level knowledge. That's where Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world, comes into play. Unraveling the craziest war stories or captivating accounts from soldiers who fought during World War II is only possible with the deep understanding that Babbel has allowed us to gain. With its comprehensive and unique learning model, you too can dive into original German sources of information. Every lesson is crafted and narrated by real native teachers and linguistic experts, not computers or AI algorithms, providing an authentic learning experience unlike any other. But Babbel is not only about learning German. Explore 14 different languages, including Spanish, Italian, French, and Russian. With an impressive 20-day money-back guarantee, you can be confident in the value you're receiving. In an exclusive offer for Dark Seas viewers, Babbel is offering a whopping 60% discount for new subscribers for a limited time. Click on the link in the description below and start speaking a new language in only three weeks. Allow yourself to learn a new language von der Pika auf, from the bottom up. Embrace the past and enhance your understanding with Babbel. No offense. The Admiral Hipper class of heavy cruisers was part of the German naval rearmament following the ascent of the Nazi party in 1933. Germany solidified the Anglo-German naval agreement with Great Britain, providing a legal foundation for the rearmament of the German navy in 1935. According to the agreement, Germany was permitted to construct five treaty cruisers, weighing approximately 10,000 long tons. Although the Admiral Hipper class ships technically adhered to this weight limit, they exceeded it significantly in practice. Among them, Prince Eugen possessed a captivating allure that surpassed all expectations. Regarded as one of the most visually striking warships ever crafted, she was the third vessel of the esteemed Admiral Hipper class. The name was derived from a revered French hero of the Austrian Empire, thus embodying the spirit and heritage of the ancient Austro-Hungarian Royal and Imperial Navy. Originally, the German Navy was going to name the vessel after Admiral Wilhelm von Tegethoff, the man who delivered a crushing defeat to the Italian Navy in 1866. Nevertheless, Adolf Hitler settled on another name, not wishing to offend Mussolini and his new Italian allies. The ship was launched on August 22, 1938, to much fanfare in the presence of Hitler himself. The Pinnacle Prince Eugen was visually captivating and a feat of engineering brilliance. With a length of over 200 meters, she commanded attention wherever she sailed. Her true power lay beneath the surface. This heavy cruiser possessed unrivaled might, displacing a staggering 16,970 tons. Powered by an impressive 132,000 shaft horsepower, Prince Eugen could cut through the waters at a maximum speed of 32 knots. It wasn't just her speed that set her apart. Prince Eugen housed a standard crew of 42 officers and 1,340 enlisted personnel, working in unison to operate the ship's magnificent weaponry. Her primary armament consisted of eight 20.3-centimeter SKL-60 guns housed in four twin turrets. These formidable guns were ready to unleash devastation upon any enemy that dared to cross her path. Prince Eugen boasted 12 10.5-centimeter L-65 anti-aircraft guns, 12 3.7-centimeter guns, and eight 2-centimeter guns, making her a formidable opponent from any angle. As for her offensive capabilities, two triple 53.3-centimeter torpedo launchers added to her arsenal, ensuring that her adversaries face threats on the surface and beneath the waves. In addition to her devastating firepower, Prince Eugen possessed remarkable aerial reconnaissance capabilities. Equipped with three Arado AR-196 seaplanes and a catapult, she could launch and retrieve these aircraft, extending her surveillance and intelligence-gathering capabilities far beyond the horizon. 
Her designers recognized the need for protection, outfitting her with robust armor plating. A belt thickness ranging from 70 to 80 millimeters provided a formidable shield against enemy attacks, and her upper deck thickness of 12 to 30 millimeters and a main armored deck thickness of 20 to 50 millimeters ensured that Prince Eugen could withstand the onslaught of enemy fire. She symbolized German ingenuity and was a force to be reckoned with on the high seas. Dirty Fighting In 1941, the British cruiser HMS Suffolk encountered the German ships Bismarck and Prince Eugen while patrolling the Denmark Strait. Aware of the danger posed by these formidable vessels, Suffolk swiftly maneuvered away from them as the German ships were within range of their powerful guns. Captain Robert M. Ellis, commanding Suffolk, steered the cruisers in the northeast to southwest direction, anticipating the German ships' approach from the northeast. The southwest leg worried him the most, as it made it difficult to spot the German ships approaching from behind. Despite having radar, Suffolk's effectiveness was limited in detecting ships in her stern arcs. Then, the captain's concerns became a reality. Suffolk sailed into a fog bank, hoping to evade detection. Uncertain if the Germans had spotted them, the captain knew that shells raining down on his ship would be the first sign of being discovered. Engaging the Germans head-on would be impossible for Suffolk, as her role was to locate the German convoy and direct heavier British ships to intercept. Captain Ellis allowed the German ships to pass within the fog and began shadowing them from their port quarter, maintaining a radar range. The German vessels aimed to reach the Atlantic undetected to disrupt convoys. Unbeknownst to them, the British battlecruiser Hood and battleship Prince of Wales were closing in to confront them. Focused Fire On May 24, 1941, Prince of Wales reported enemy sightings, and the British ships closed in on the Germans. Hood mistakenly fired at Prince Eugen, while Prince of Wales engaged Bismarck. The four ships exchanged fire, with the Germans targeting Hood, which was hit and caught fire. The German ships launched another salvo, and just as the British ships turned to bring their full broadside to bear, Hood exploded in a massive eruption, breaking in half and sinking. Prince of Wales had to maneuver to avoid the wreckage, witnessing the tragic loss of life as Hood sank. The Germans focused their fire on the remaining British ship. A shell from Bismarck struck Prince of Wales, causing heavy casualties. In response, Prince of Wales made smoke, turned away, and disengaged from the battle. Despite suffering losses, Prince of Wales managed to land three hits on Bismarck, two of which had significant consequences. One hit caused flooding, leading to the shutdown of two boilers and a loss of speed for Bismarck. Another hit caused further flooding, leaving Bismarck trailing fuel allowing the British to track her movements. Realizing the need for repairs, the German fleet commander changed course for France. The British ships, including Prince of Wales, pursued the Germans toward the French coast. Thus, Prince Eugen continued the raiding mission alone, while Bismarck and Prince of Wales engaged in a brief exchange of fire. However, Prince Eugen managed to escape undetected. A dramatic naval chase ensued as British ships attempted to cut off Bismarck's path. Eventually, they succeeded, and sank her on May 27, 1941. But facing fuel and machinery issues, Prince Eugen had to abandon her raiding mission. War Prize After Bismarck, the German battleship Prince Eugen was docked in Brest, alongside Scharnhorst and Gneisenau throughout 1941. Bombing attacks by the RAF made it clear that their situation was unsustainable. Hitler decided to redeploy the ships to Norway instead. The Germans had two options, retracing their steps through the Denmark Strait or taking the shorter but riskier route through the English Channel. Hitler chose the latter. Prince Eugen would have to cross the Channel in broad daylight and avoid British sea and air attacks along the way. On February 11th the following year, the three German ships, accompanied by escorts, managed to slip out of Brest undetected and began their perilous journey through the English Channel. Despite hitting mines, Scharnhorst and Gneisenau successfully evaded the British forces, and Prince Eugen once again humiliated the British. However, their triumph was short-lived. On February 23rd, the British submarine HMS Trident torpedoed Prince Eugen, causing severe damage. After repairs in Germany, Prince Eugen operated in Baltic waters for the remainder of the war, supporting German forces on the Eastern Front. In March, she bombarded Russian-held positions with thousands of shells. Eventually, she sailed for Copenhagen and joined the German light cruiser Nuremberg. As the war in Europe neared its end, 
Prince Eugen was ceremonially decommissioned by her crew on May 7th and taken over by the Royal Navy the following day. Remarkably, the heavy cruiser was the largest German warship to survive the war. She was escorted to Wilhelmshaven by British cruisers and dry docked. Meanwhile, the Americans wanted to prevent Prince Eugen from falling into Russian hands, but had no immediate use for the ship. The remaining German fleet was divided into lots drawn from a hat to settle the matter, and the Americans acquired Prince Eugen. On January 5, 1946, she was commissioned as a war prize into the U.S. Navy and sailed to Boston with a mixed American-German crew. Grounded By May 1, 1946, the last of the German crew had left Prince Eugen, and she arrived at Bikini Atoll the following month to participate in the nuclear testing of Operation Crossroads. The ship was moored at a distance from the detonation points for the Abel and Baker tests. While relatively undamaged, Prince Eugen became highly radioactive, like other surviving vessels. She was towed to Kwajalein for decontamination. In December, Prince Eugen was observed listing with her stern low in the water. Attempts to beach the ship on Ennebuj Island failed, and she grounded on a coral ledge offshore. The ship continued to take on water and capsized the following day. Due to the radioactive contamination, little could be done, and she was left in that position. In the 1970s, a survey found that Prince Eugen was radiation-free, but the report emphasized the need to remove the ordnance and residual fuel before salvage operations. However, no action was taken. The report suggested that all the fuel should be removed within the next 30 years, regardless of salvage efforts. To this day, the wreck of this twice-nuked war survivor is a popular dive attraction in shallow waters at Kwajalein Atoll. Thank you for watching our video. Ready to unravel history's hidden secrets like never before? Learn languages straight von der Pika auf, from the bottom up with Babbel. Claim your exclusive 60% subscription discount and start understanding history on a deeper level. Click on the link in the description below and you'll be speaking a new language before the summer is over. Danke. Thank you. And see you in the app.